Hey, how's it going guys? So I've been wanting to make videos for a long time, but honestly my computer would just sound like a jet engine every time I tried screen recording and I didn't have a camera. Um, but I picked up a new MacBook, I got a better camera, and so now there's no excuses left for me. 2022, I'm gonna be start making a lot more videos. And honestly, I have no idea what I'm even doing. Like I have no setup behind me. Um, I'm not even sure this is recording, hopefully it is. <laughs> Uh, but that's why I thought as the first video we could do something fun and we could do one of those tier lists that YouTubers do. And for this one we could just do like WordPress page builders and just rank them um, just off the cuff and rank them wherever I want to put them and just keep in mind that this is for entertainment purposes only. So if you have a different ranking then please feel free to make your own video. Um, and yeah, things change all the time, which is why I'll kind of be going through like what each page builder has done over the past year. And yeah, let's get right into it. So first off we have Beaver Builder. I think I'm gonna put Beaver Builder in the B tier, B for Beaver Builder. Uh, because Beaver Builder is kind of boring, but in a good way, like it's predictable. Um, yeah, it's predictable, stable, but it doesn't really make a splash in the news at all. Like they don't release any revolutionary new features. And if we look at their 2021 change log, um, it's, it was mostly just quality of life improvements. I mean, there's a ton of changes, but nothing on the list was kind of like, oh wow, that's a big change for them. So I think B is pretty solid and that's where I'm gonna put Beaver Builder. Next up we have Breezy or Brizzy, however you say it. And this one's tough for me because Probably a year ago, I might've put it higher just because of my hope for it. But to be honest, I've been a little disappointed with Brizzy. When I first tried it, I remember being like, wow, this is the future of making websites. There are so many cool different features. Um, but then once I got into it a bit deeper and I, I think I even tried making a website with it last year, uh, I just remember there was a couple times I wanted to throw my laptop at the wall. Um, like it's, it's close to being good but it started off with a lot of deception. I think they fixed a decent amount of that, um, but that just like wasn't a good taste in my mouth when they didn't really want to address that for a while. But mostly it was the UI that I actually had an issue with. So their UI is probably like the best part about it, but also there's some things that are just over-engineered in my opinion. Like there's times where uh, like the side panel overlaps your content and then you can have icons that are like hidden by another icon. Um, and then like switching from desktop to mobile was a pain for me. Um, so yeah, I used it and didn't really like it. But if you look at their change log from this year, they added design packs, which let's be honest, Brizzy probably has the best design packs out of all the page builders on this list. They added stories, which I don't know, have any of you made a story with your website? Um, and then membership functionality, which is mostly just a way to um, display different content to different user roles. So, I mean, kind of handy, but like not really features that are um, taking Brizzy where it needs to go. So for me, Brizzy is gonna go in the D tier. Next up, I thought we had this, actually I'll just bring it to the front. Next up we have Bricks. Um, and admittingly, I haven't spent as much time with Bricks as I would like. I, I played around with it when it first came out. Um, but like I wasn't super impressed with it because it just felt like a different version of Elementor. But since then they've added um, container elements, code blocks, big UI improvements. Um, that's what I wrote. Performance improvements, uh, WooCommerce Builder and CSS classes. And those are pretty big changes. Like those, all of those things on that list are things I would have liked to see. So that's a big plus for them. Um, like I still think they have a long way to go to become uh, like up in the big leagues, especially with like display conditions. And I don't think they have CSS grid yet. So I'm gonna put it at a C because it's not at the level of like a Beaver Builder yet, but it has a lot of potential. So I could see this potentially moving to B or A next year. Next up we have Divi. And Divi is also one of the OGs where I think back when I was using Visual Composer, I remember hearing about Divi and then I played around with it and I was kind of blown away by the fact that it was actually a visual builder for once where you could drag things around and see the changes live. Um, so Divi was really cool. 
but then it kind of grew out of hand, I feel like, where the performance suffered, there's all these like things popping up on the page and it just felt very bloated. And that's when the other page builders came into the market and then my attention was diverted towards the other page builders and I, I haven't really gone back to it. But looking at their changes this year, they made performance improvements, which I mean, that's probably the number one thing they needed to do. They added display conditions, which I think are like, that's probably my favorite or one of my favorite features in Oxygen. Um, they added full site editing, which is handy, I guess. And then WooCommerce modules, which is also handy as well. So I'll give Divi, um, I think a C tier. Like I don't, like I know that's gonna sound harsh, but I'm going to leave it at C for now and just see, uh, see how it feels. <laughs> and then next up we have Elementor, which I'm probably going to rate higher than it deserves. I mean, Elementor is nice because it's kind of like the standard page builder where if you needed to recommend a page builder to like a random person, you just say Elementor and kind of be safe with that recommendation. Um, like it has a big community, it has a lot of design sets, at least from the community. Um, and there's a ton of add-ons. So there is quite a bit of power with Elementor and it's also very easy to use and easy for clients to edit. But at the same time, there's a lot of things that annoy me with Elementor. Uh, luckily, they're gonna fix one of these things in 2022, which was not having a container element. So there were so many times where I just needed something basic, but if it was slightly different than what one of their widgets would allow you to accomplish, then you had to like create a custom widget or just not do that or just figure out how to like put sections within sections and it just got a little messy. Um, and then I was gonna say Elementor is also stable but I feel like every time I update Elementor, my like bullet list will like change whether they're top aligned or middle aligned. Like there's always something that changes every update and I need to go back and look at all my pages. So, um, <laughs> It's stable, but not totally. Uh, but I'm gonna put it, uh, I think at a B tier. I was thinking about A just because of like how easy it is to recommend, but there's too many things about it that kind of annoy me a little bit and it doesn't feel like the, those are gonna get fixed anytime soon. Oh, and before I move on, let's just look at Elementor's changelog from this year. So Elementor added some custom code widgets, save form submissions, like video playlist and hotspot widgets, WooCommerce styling and widgets, some experimental performance improvements. And like those were kind of random changes for me, I thought this year. Um, like they had this text path widget where you could like, uh, I don't know, like write text on like a curved line. Like that's, it just feels weird to get that before like being able to put a negative sign in the margins without it like completely overwriting it with a zero. Like there's just small things about it that I wish they would focus on before some of these crazy widgets. But the container element is coming next year and that's definitely gonna be a big improvement for them. Moving on, we get to Gutenberg. And Gutenberg, I mean, this one is gonna be interesting. I'm not sure where to put it just yet. I know it's all the rage these days and I know that's probably where a lot of people are gonna be moving to in the future, but I just find Gutenberg very frustrating I mean, yeah, like it's obviously gotten better in the past year, but I just find it very frustrating. And if we pull up a page really quick, I just want to show you like some of the things that bother me. So uh, this is just the Bloxy theme and I imported a starter site. And if I click on like this button, it just completely changes position and just looks like it just, this isn't what I would want to be happening when I go to edit a website. Like if I click on this box, then all of a sudden it's bigger than all the other boxes and it's like bigger up here, bigger here. Like what, uh, yeah, I'm just like, what is going on right now? And to me, it feels like Gutenberg is moving towards like a Wix website builder as opposed to something more of like a Webflow, which is like a, you know, like a real website builder. Um, but I get that there's performance improvements and it's kind of like the standardized platform. I just don't know if I fully buy into it yet but I guess we'll see what happens over the next year. So Gutenberg, I'm gonna say, for me still, it gets a D. Like I, I don't look forward to making websites in Gutenberg, at least not yet. So next up we have Oxygen, which personally for me is my favorite builder on this list, or at least the one that I use the most. 
Um, I use it for most websites other than ones where um, clients like want to be very active and edit their own content. So I think I'm going to put oxygen in the A tier. It doesn't get an S tier for me because it doesn't feel like a super modern page builder. It's not the fastest. Like sometimes it takes like 10 to 20 seconds to load the builder, which feels way too long for me. Um, and I know they worked on improving some of that, but I haven't necessarily seen those speed improvements. And then even sometimes too, when you're editing a page, it'll there'll be like a lag every time you click on an element. Um, and these are for certain sites. Like if you're starting with a fresh install or a small website, then that's really not an issue at all. It's actually not as slow as some people say. Um, but I do still think there's a lot of room for improvement there. So that's the reason it's not getting an S from me. But there are so many things to love about Oxygen, um, especially when it comes to just the power and flexibility. Like I feel like I personally can build pretty much any website with Oxygen. And even if I'm not using one of their built-in features or elements, I know that I can just plop in a code block or like find some PHP to steal and put it in there. Um, so to me, Oxygen is definitely the most limitless out of all the builders on this list. And even if we look at their changes from this year, they have some pretty good ones. Like there weren't a ton this year, but they had CSS grid, composite elements, advanced query builder, metabox integration, backend improvements, and just general quality of life stuff. Um, so like the advanced queries, like that was all, like that's a huge update for me because that means you can build like any kind of query, which is nice for building like magazine sites or uh, even like virtual summits, stuff like that. And then CSS grid, um, it's just like a much easier way to build layouts sometimes. So yeah, Oxygen gets an A for me. Next we have Thrive Architect, which I actually wasn't sure if I should include on this list because Thrive is actually more for like um, coaches and consultants and the actual business businesses themselves rather than web designers who build websites for a ton of people. So they have like a suite of products where you can have, you know, like have your own course or have your own quizzes and stuff, which is handy for web designers, but you can just tell by their marketing and their language that it's built for businesses as opposed to like web agencies. Um, but it is a pretty good builder. It just, I mean, it's not as popular. It has a focus on like online marketing and I don't think it really integrates with, just, with as much as some of the other builders. So for these purposes, I think I'd put it at a D just cause I wouldn't put it with Bricks or Divi, I don't think. Um, but if I was like a coach and I was ranking these, then I'd probably put it a bit higher just cause it's easy to work with. And there's a bunch of templates that you can use to start your business like right out of the box. Second to last, we have WP Bakery Page Builder, which all of us, well, at least most of us have probably used before. And I don't want to spend much time on this one. I actually did look at the change log and I wrote down nothing. Uh, so it's pretty much like it's used by so many themes that it'll just never change and never get better. And it's pretty bad in 2021. So, <laughs> I mean, this one's E tier for me. And last we have Zion and Zion Builder is probably the most interesting out of all of these page builders, at least for me, because I tried it earlier this year and it wasn't that amazing, especially the UI I just found like kind of confusing. Um, but I played around with the latest beta and it is a lot better and they've added a lot of features over the last few months. And like loading the editor is super fast, like dragging the padding and margin is like buttery smooth. And um, I know like some add-on developers have enjoyed working with it. Um, so I think Zion has a ton of potential. It still has a way to, or a ways to go before it catches up. Like it doesn't have CSS grid. It doesn't have display conditions yet. Um, and I, it doesn't have like the advanced query builder, um, but it has a lot of what's good about Oxygen in there. And it has a lot of what Oxygen could improve on. So I'm gonna put this one at the C level for now. To me, it's pretty similar to Bricks where um, it's good now, but it has a lot of room to get better. And I think um, this would, I think Zion could potentially become an S, but that's if they execute everything like pretty perfectly because I have a pretty high standard for what an S would be. Um, but yeah, I think I'd leave it at C for now. So that's a wrap for this tier list. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Again, this was just me having some fun. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you agree 
with my selections. And if you don't, then please hold back here. No, I'm just kidding. If you don't agree, also let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think I got wrong. Um, and yeah, it'll be interesting to see how some of these page builders evolve over 2022. My plan is to do another one next year and we'll see how the rankings compare. Um, but if you did enjoy this video, then please hit the red subscribe button below. That'll just help me know that I should do less of what makes me money and more of what takes me hours to do and makes me no money whatsoever. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.